Hi, I'm Al Benner, owner of Moss Acres, and today I'd like to share with you some of the techniques and experiences we've learned over the last 10 years for growing and transplanting moss. Moss is truly an amazing plant. It's been around longer than any terrestrial plant, perhaps as long as 350 to 400 million years. It does some amazing things for us. It sequesters CO2, retains moisture, and actually also purifies the air that we breathe. It's also very low maintenance. Moss requires no mowing, fertilizing, or chemicals, and even is very drought resistant once established. When it comes to being green, it doesn't get any greener than moss. Stay with us now as we show you how to establish a moss garden on your property. The first thing to consider when you're trying to figure out where you're going to establish a moss garden is the site. Now what we've selected here is a nice shady area. We've got a northeast exposure. We know we have a lot of moisture in this area. We already have moss growing on the, on the walls here. So what we're going to do is clear these leaves and debris and weeds from this area, getting down to a bare soil area. So I'll start on that now. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is just take a regular leaf rake and get the majority of the, the leaves and debris off. And then I'm going to come in with that heavier steel rake to get roughen the soil up a bit, scratch it up, and get it more ready for the, mo the moss to, to adhere to. It's very important that the moss adhere nice and tight to the soil. We don't want any air gaps, so we're going to have to rake this up real smooth. I'm now raking the soil bed with a steel rake and removing some of the stones. And uh, what I'm finding here is a nice soil bed. We've got a, a pretty uh, nice mix of, it's like a, a silty clay. And I want to stress that moss likes a firm, dense soil. It doesn't like something that's too fluffy and peaty. It's going to want something dense and compact. So clay soils are good, even some sand in there. If you've got a real fluffy soil, you're going to want to add some clay and, and sand to make a denser soil that you can compact well and compress. Um, also, if you've got any of these weeds like growing up, small trees, I just pull these out before we uh, go and transplant the moss. And again, I want to stress, you must have a damp, shady area for moss. Most mosses prefer those kind of environments. There's a few that grow in the sun, but we're most familiar with shade-loving mosses, and that's what we're going to be focusing on today. What I have here now is polyacrylamide gel powder. This is actually the component found in diapers to hold moisture. And we don't necessarily need this here because it's a pretty moist area, but in areas where people have a little bit drier site, I actually like recommend raking a little bit of this into the top one half to one inch of soil profile. So we just sprinkle that over the area like that. Now what I also have here is a powdered sulfur. And I'm gonna, again, my pHs are pretty low here, but I'm still gonna just put a little of this on more for demonstration purposes. I'm still not convinced that uh, sulfur and the pH is nearly as important as uh, moisture and shade. Those are much more critical elements, but if you like, you can add a little sulfur to your soil. And then we're actually going to just take our rake and rake this all in to the top half inch or so soil profile, just like that. We're now going to show the four varieties of moss available through Moss Acres. Uh, I'm actually holding haircap moss, and this is a our highest growing moss. You see some of the spore heads here. And what we actually recommend doing, I've already watered the, uh, the actual moss planting bed previously, so it's nice and moist now. And now I'm actually going to take each section of moss and just kind of dunk it into the water here and uh, get it nice and wet. And then I'm going to take it and relocate it to the spot where I want to position it. Now this is really important. You want to press it in real firmly. So you have complete contact. I don't care if that moss even gets scrunched down a little bit. It's got to be really tightly compressed. Now I'm going to next do a, this is a very nice large section of um, rock cap moss. And you can see how it's very, it's bone dry. We ship our moss dry so that it won't mold during storage. But when we wet this down, I'll let that one soak a minute. I've already got a section here that I've already pre-wet. You can see how this has really come up nice and lush green. I'm going to position that over in here. I'm going to do kind of a tapestry of mosses here, of different mosses. Rock cap is, will grow on soil or on top of rocks. 
as will actually a lot of these mosses. Um, over here is what we call the boss of moss. This is hypnum or sheet moss and this is bone dry. Moss has no true roots <clears throat> so it's getting all its moisture from the, from the um, air, absorbing it through the fronds. The fronds trade the moisture with each other, sharing the moisture during droughts. So nothing is coming up from the ground, it's all coming from above. That's why it's very important to continually mist or sprinkle or water this moss for the first couple months following transplantation. So uh, my large section of uh, rock cap is now ready to go. So I'm going to pull that out and transplant that. I think I'm going to go with this one right in here. Pressing it in very firmly. So we'll come back in a second and we'll show you some more of the hypnum sheet moss laid out and what this is going to start to look like. Two here. important things to mention here before I put this last piece in place of rock cap moss. Uh, you'll notice this is very sticky and tacky where we put down the uh, gel powder earlier. What I want to make sure people are clear on is that don't do a large area with that and be stepping in it. Kind of do this section by section with your gel powder where it really starts to stick to your feet. Okay, I'm going to put this last section in place. And one other thing I wanted to mention as I position this again, very tight, press it down, nice and firm. You'll notice here with the sheet moss or hypnum, this is getting pretty dark green. We watered this a little while ago. We've been adding some more sections here. These were actually, in an, it came from an area where there was quite a bit of early spring sun before the leaves leafed out. And moss's response, some moss's response to a, a, too much light is this turns this golden brown color. In this case, more of a gold color. We give this a, a couple days here in this shady spot, keep it wet, it'll go right back to this dark lush green. So we've got a mix of mosses. You can see over here we've got uh, cushion moss, leucobrium, and that has gone to a brilliant green from the light grayish green that it was earlier. So this will fill in uh, beautifully and be a lush dark green carpet for years to come. I forgot my sprinkling can today, but just want to re reinforce what's really critical with moss right after you plant it is just to really soak it in thoroughly. And you can see right now this is going to give good adhesion to the soil and you would want to keep this nice and damp. Uh, you don't want to see any ponding water but you want to keep keep this damp for the next couple months whenever you can. Every couple days just make sure it's nice and moist. Once established the only real maintenance with moss is keeping the leaves and debris off in the fall. And we came up with a really neat uh, idea several years ago. Actually, my, my dad, Dave, did. Uh, this is a quarter inch black mesh netting. And we actually roll this out over the moss. This will also keep birds and squirrels from digging in the moss. And once all the leaves have fallen, you simply just pull this back and you've got a clean bed of moss. So just wanted to simulate that and show you this is, a, this is the one thing you do need to do in the fall is make sure the leaves are removed from the moss. They can smother it and suffocate it. They do not insulate it like other plants. You've got to keep the leaves off in the fall. Well, we've got a start on our project here. Uh, I got so excited by this, I think I'm going to continue down along here and create a whole moss garden along our old wall here up at Moss Acres. And uh, just a couple other points. I didn't mention that you can actually use a leaf blower on a low setting once this is really established in the fall and just kind of keep back a little bit from it and you can blow leaves off leaves off a of moss uh, in, in lieu of using the netting. Um, the other thing I will mention is that you should definitely keep this moist for the first one to two months until this gets established on its location. Make sure it stays in good contact with the soil and is kept damp. Once you get to that point, if you're in a shady spot in an area with enough moisture year round, your moss is going to be pretty much maintenance free. You may have a few weeds to pull here and there keep the leaves off. If you want it to look lusher and greener during periods of drought, just keep it wet. It'll turn back to green in just a few minutes. And that's pretty much it. It's, a, it's really a great, simple way to go to get a green, evergreen ground cover that's low maintenance year round. And you're working with nature in the shade instead of against it.